so low. I need to sit up a little bit higher. I think that's a tad bit better. But I've decided to do a video about fear, or I should say overcoming fear, because that's one of the main things that keeps us from our destiny and our purpose. So fear is more than just a feeling. It's a state of being. It's something that it's an emotion that you feel, but it's an overwhelming force that sometimes and a lot of times overtakes you and keeps you from your destiny, your purpose, and what it is you're supposed to do in life. Everyone has some kind of fear, but I'm talking about the fear that stops you, the fear that prevents you, the fear that holds you back, the fear that you get so much overwhelming anxiety that you don't progress. And that's what I want to talk about, overcoming fear. So it is an anticipation of wrong, an anticipation of hurt, an anticipation of harm. So guess what? You're anticipating all of these negative things to come towards you. How can we rewire our thinking so that we are not focused on what we don't want to happen, but that we're focused on what we do want to happen? And part of it is retraining your thought life by retraining what you think on, what you hear, what you see, what you meditate on, what you watch. All those things sort of impregnate you, if I can use that language, and help foster more and more thoughts. And so I, what I want to do is to help us overcome fear by changing what we think. Partly using positive affirmations, but I am a uh, ordained minister, so I'm going to talk about the Bible, which is what is most important to me. So, and I believe it, and I believe in its power, and I also believe that it is the fundamental way that we can improve our lives and the lives of others, because let's face it, no one wants to be around someone who's always afraid. Fear is almost a contagious emotion because you can feel it from another person. When someone's terrified or fearful, you can feel it. And so that fear can easily be transferred to another. So think of it as in um, someone around you, not even with you, is screaming or afraid. That fear or terror can be felt by someone who who's not with you, someone you don't even know, but you can feel it. And so I want us to think about, it's a sermon that I preached very recently that said, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? And think about that. What, what would you really do if you weren't afraid? And think about what it is that's holding you back and see if you can figure out why. Um, I really use my time in prayer to not just ask for things. I know that seems to be a popular, and it is popular. Everybody wants, especially in America, more stuff, more stuff. But what I want us to think about using in prayer is using prayer as a way to self-reflect or using it as a mirror, so to speak, to, to learn more about ourselves and more about how we can develop as a person. So that's the challenge to use prayer to help you develop as a person and not just to ask for things. So in prayer, ask God, what is it that's holding me back? What is it that I'm afraid of? What is it that I need to overcome so I can fulfill my purpose and my destiny, which our destiny and purpose is always connected to helping somebody else. It is never this individualistic sort of, I'm just going to amass a ton of money and be this super wealthy, rich kind of whatever the popular thing is for people to be. It is never that self-centered, not, not when you're talking about Christ and Christians and ministry. It's never that. So we know that it is more than your destiny is not an individual affair. It is something collective, it is something community, and it is something that will enrich the lives of other people around you and maybe people that you have yet to meet. It will not be just you and you blessed somewhere, you know, on a boat and a yacht and 
in the Riviera. That's not, that's not what Christianity is about, and that's not what ministry is about. It is always about helping someone else, but it's difficult to help anyone else if you are straddled and constrained with fear. So fear constrains, and that's one of the, the first things I want to uh, talk about is how it constrains us. It constrains us first in our minds. It makes us believe that we can't do something. It makes us believe that we're not good enough. It will make you believe that you're not qualified. And all of these sort of negatives that will come up, fear, that's what it is. It's the voice that says you can't, you're not good enough, you're not going to do well, don't even try, don't apply, don't do this, don't do that. Oh my God, what if this happens? That's the voice of fear. And so we need to recognize it when it comes up so that we can drown out that voice of fear with voices of faith. So as Christians, we need to learn the Bible. I know um, it's a lot of things vying for our time, but if we're Christians, we have to learn the Word of God because that is our saving grace. That's what we're going to use to overcome our fears. So I will continue this lesson. I'll also do um, tweets with... Um, positive affirmations and biblical scriptures and things during the week to help encourage people to over want you to read um, along with me as I'm doing a study in the book of Matthew. Um, so read along with me. I'm actually on Matthew chapter four right now. So read along with me, um, Matthew chapter four. And um, we're going to keep talking about overcoming fear in the weeks to come. I'm going to try to um, be live every Friday night around 7 p.m. So Friday night live with Reverend Ruby. If you want to reach me, I'm also on Facebook, um, Rev Ruby Pollard, P-O-L-L-A-R-D. And you can find me there as well. So God bless you, but I want you to be blessed, but also to be a blessing. And you can be a blessing to yourself first, by working on overcoming your fears. God bless you and have a good night.